Well, Merry Christmas. It is so great to be with you today, and I hope your Christmas celebrations are full of joy. My name is Clay Munkus, and I get the honor of being the lead pastor here at Next Level, and I'm so glad that you've chosen to join us here on, of all days, Christmas Day. If you were like me as a child, Christmas Day brought uh, a lot of expectation because this was the morning that we got to wake up and receive all of the presents that Santa had left under the tree. Uh, Christmas, really for me, was the highlight of my year. I would get so excited on Christmas Eve, it was hard for me to even go to sleep. I would lie awake at night, listening for any sound of Santa, and eventually I would fall asleep, only to wake up just a short time later, wondering, man, has Santa come yet? Has it come yet? And, and this cycle would go on for hours until I couldn't take anymore. And then I would head into one of my sister's rooms and I would wake them up, usually if I were guessing probably 4 or 5 a.m. Once all awake, we would run downstairs to the living room to see what new presents had awaited us kind of under the tree that was there. But there was something that we knew. We knew we weren't supposed to start opening presents until mom and dad were up. So what did we do? Well, we went into their bedroom, we jumped on top of their sleeping bodies in the bed, and we kind of jumped around until they got up. Then we tried to wait patiently while mom and dad, you know, made coffee, made sure that there was camera, a film in the camera. Uh, but our heart was just pounding with all kinds of Christmas adrenaline. Finally, when both parents had appeared in the living room in their pajamas with bags under their eyes, we were able to tear into all of those presents. And 15 minutes later, it was all over. It was done. And now is the time we get to enjoy all of it. Uh, we took the new bike outside. We set up the new game console. And we spent the rest of the day in happy play, never noticing the noise of the vacuum or the flurry of activities in the kitchen as our parents were preparing for the rest of the day. You see, the gifts that we got on Christmas morning, they kind of served as evidence that Santa had indeed come. In a way, kind of like that, as adults, when we talk about the real Christmas story, we have some evidence. We have evidence that Jesus came. Uh, but maybe this time of year, maybe the only evidence you have is just a little bit of hope. A hope, though, that has been placed there by Jesus in faith. And, and this isn't always easy, especially if we feel that the only thing that we have going into the Christmas season is a tiny bit of hope. But I'm here to tell you, that hope is truly a gift. It's one that's worth celebrating, remembering, and encouraging. And, and at this point in the Christmas season, I, I'm sure that many of you have already heard and or you have read the Christmas story many times over. If not, I would encourage you to go and open up your Bible and read the account that Luke wrote in Luke chapter 2. That would be a good read to do on Christmas. So for today, I want to take you to some words that are a little different. These are words that Paul wrote to the church in Rome about this hope that we have in Jesus. And in Romans chapter 12, the Apostle Paul, he's giving people like us some very practical instruction about the Christian life. The first few verses of this chapter are pretty well known as, as Paul calls us to become what he calls a living sacrifice and to be transformed. But today, for the sake of talking about the gift of hope we have in Jesus on Christmas, let's look at verse 12. And let's unpack what he says in this very short little verse. He says, Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. Uh, I love the phrase he opens up with here, like rejoice in our confident hope. I I'm not sure how many of you are sports fans, but, but I'm from Atlanta. So one of my favorite teams is the Atlanta Braves. And last year, was a magical year for them as they did what no one thought was possible. Uh, two thirds of the way through the season, if you didn't know, the Braves didn't even have a winning record. But in August, things started to turn around. And with each winning series, my confidence in them began to increase over and over. The more the Braves won, the more confident I was in them winning again, all the way through winning the World Series. If you are any kind of sports fan, then you probably have experienced something kind of similar, right? Winning produces confidence. This um, is just a, a simple sports analogy, but how much more powerful is it to know that Jesus has won? 
Like when, when the odds were against him, he won. People were against him. Governments were against him. Religious people were against him, but Jesus won. And here we are 2,000 years later as proof that he won. Our hope is in someone who has won. And it's critical for us to think about that because we live in a world that is constantly working against any hope that we might have. So let me give you some hope. Just like my Atlanta Braves, let me help you get some wins and build what Paul says is a confident hope. The main thing that I want to tell you this Christmas, no matter what is robbing you of hope, no matter where you struggle, it could be envy, bitterness, guilt, shame, perfection, or any one of the kind of thousand things that we struggle with. No matter where you find yourself, you don't have to stay there. Jesus, he doesn't even want you to stay there. He wants you to build or even rebuild your life on the confident hope that he is with you, right? Not only is he with you, but he is for you. And I'm not sure how you grew up or what you were taught about God, but God is not mad at you. God is not disappointed in you. God is not trying to punish you. Christmas is a reminder that God sent his son because he loves you. So today on this Christmas day, let me remind you again, there is nothing you can do to make God love you less. Right? You, you may not have much left in the hope tank right now. You might be running on the empty. If so, I get it. I've been there too. Here's what you can do. You can borrow some of my hope. You can know that I have a confident hope for you. You, you might fall short of the perfectionism that you continue to strive for. Well, if that's true, I have a confident hope that God loves you. That you may have been hurt, and the pain of that hurt has been twisted into bitterness, and now all you see is the worst in life. If so, I have a confident hope that God loves you. You may have some things in your past or even in your present that you regret, things that have caused you guilt or shame. I have a confident hope that God loves you. You may be caught up in the never-ending trap of comparison and envy. I have a confident hope that God loves you. No matter what you've done or what you've been told, like people have said maybe that there's no way that God could love you. Well-meaning Christians may have unintentionally heaped even more guilt on you or a pastor somewhere may have told you that you need to do more to make God happy with you. Listen. If that's what you've been told, or if that's how you feel right now, you can have a confident hope that God loves you just as you are right now. All right? This is why he came at Christmas. He wanted to get to know you. He wanted you to know what true life is really about. He wanted to build a relationship with you and teach you about how he designed life to work. He wanted you to love him as much as he loves you. In that verse that we read about hope, Paul tells us to be patient in our struggles and pray. Prayer, guys, is not some magical grouping of words. It's just a conversation between two friends. And on this day, I would encourage you just to do that. Start a conversation with a friend who loves you just as you are. It may have been a long time since you've done this. Or, or it, you may have never done this. You may have never made space for prayer. Whatever your story is, I can assure you that God is ready for you. He wants to hear from you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants you to experience the thrill of hope that is only available through Him. If this weren't true, then Jesus would have never come in the first place. All right? There would be no need for a Christmas celebration and everything that we do here would be for nothing. But Jesus did come. He did live. He died for you. With the weight of your sin on his shoulders, he died. And I don't know how heavy your burdens feel today, but I know that Jesus can handle them. So, talk to him today. Share 
your heart with him. Why don't we do that right now? Let's just pray together. Jesus, help me to hear you saying that I am your hope over all the voices. Jesus, you you have said that you are the hope for the hopeless. So I'm running to you with both hands stretched out. Fill me up with hope and give me a tangible reminder today that hope is an unbreakable spiritual lifeline. God, you know those things that are in my heart that have been robbing me of hope. Today, I give them to you. I I trust them to you. Help me find small winds of hope today and each day moving forward. Help me build or even rebuild a confident hope in you. Well, hey guys, thanks for spending your Christmas with us. You know, when we talk about hope, Isaiah 40, 31 also tells us this, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. May you on this Christmas day find a strength that you never had as you build a life of confident hope in Jesus. A Merry Christmas. And as a reminder, Uh, We will not be meeting next Sunday, January 1st, in person, but you can gather with us right here online. We'll gather again in person on January 8th. We're going to start a brand new series called He Gets Us. As we look at what Jesus has to say and how he understands our heartache, our anxiety, our troubles, and our financial struggles. I, I hope that we can see you there. 